In this video, we're gonna talk about ribbon microphones. Sadly, I don't have one to hold up to the camera because I sold mine, I'm still sad about it. So first off, ribbon microphones are awesome. I used to have a number of them and I got rid of them because I'm a dummy. Ribbon microphones have a really cool, warm, that made no sense, a really, a few moments later. They sound really good. Okay, so what is a ribbon microphone? I'm gonna use this as an example because I don't have one. So a ribbon microphone is pretty easy to understand. So again, not a ribbon microphone, but we're gonna use it as an example. So in a ribbon microphone, there is a thin strip of metal that is suspended between two magnetic poles. So basically sound hits that super thin metal strip and vibrates between that magnetic field and produces a tiny electrical signal. Probably the biggest benefit of a ribbon microphone is the fact that they have this very warm, natural sound to them. They're not hyped up like a condenser microphone like this one has a very extended top end a lot of times and so they sound very, uh, they sound larger than life a lot of times. A ribbon microphone doesn't sound like that. It sounds very natural, and even sometimes maybe too much. It will almost sound dull. So you, you find this balance in ribbon microphones from this warm, rich sound to possibly dull, but that's preference and that's just totally subjective. So similarly to a dynamic microphone, ribbon microphones have a very low output, so it takes a lot of input gain to get enough signal out of them. And if there is a drawback to them, uh, between dynamic uh, condenser and ribbon microphones, a ribbon microphone is probably the most delicate of all of them, and so you gotta be very careful because, you know, I could throw this across the room and it won't break. You could set a ribbon microphone down too hard and it might break. So while they sound really cool and have very distinctive characteristics, they're pretty fragile. So ribbon microphones can be really cool on, you know, lower level sound sources. A lot of times, you know, orchestral things or uh, even, you know, lower level guitar amps and things like that. You don't want to crank an amp. I'm speaking broadly here because I don't want you to go off of my advice and then go damage a microphone. <laughs> but. Basically, I would usually use them on lower level instruments. I've used them as drum overheads and they sound awesome, but that was on a session where I was doing some more, you know, brushes and things like that. But they sound really cool. So if I were to use ribbon microphones in church, if you're a church that has, you know, different wind instruments uh, or, you know, strings or some softer drums, things like that. So I realized, most people won't just have them laying around, but if you have them available to you, give it a try. They're really cool. So basically, ribbon microphones have just a very natural and warm and rich sound to them. They can be more delicate, so you have to be careful with them, but they definitely have a place uh, in live sound, I think. And the way that a ribbon microphone picks up signals is just on the front and back. The front and back equally, because think about it. It's got the uh, little diaphragm in there that's gonna shake, it's gonna receive sound that way, so it's gonna be shaking this way. But if sound hits it from this side, oop, there we go, from this side, it's not gonna shake this diaphragm. So it has really good side rejection. So that's something to think about when you're uh, setting them up and thinking of how you can use them in your situation. So real quick, I do wanna tell you I'm really excited. This week, I'm launching my new ebook. This is a resource that I wish I had when I was first running sound. And basically, I learned everything by trial and error. I went to school for the stuff, and to be honest, I didn't really learn any of the stuff I know now in school. This is what I wish I had learned. And honestly, barring a lot of just life experience with sound, this is what I think everyone should know right out of the gate so that you can make more informed decisions. So the first 100 downloads, I'm making it pay what you want with a minimum of a dollar because I had to put something there, but you can pay what you want. If you want more, thanks, but if you pay a dollar, cool. And that's also totally with my permission to share it with your sound team. I got into all this stuff and I started running sound as a frustrated worship leader, so I just wanna help you. That's why I started this channel, that's why I started the email list, that's why I started all the stuff I have. I literally just wanna help you have the resources that you need. So if you're one of those just small churches where you're a worship leader and you're just all hands on deck, you have no help, you're just pulling people from the audience to run sound, you don't have an experienced sound team, I think this will be helpful, especially getting them just off the ground so that they can have any clue what they're even looking at with this stuff. So hit the link in the description, check it out. I hope you enjoy it and I hope it blesses you. I'll see you guys in the next one, bye.